right, yes. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, please, and then we will get this ball crack a lacking. Mm, Dev, I'm going to preach today. <laughs> We're going to release this word today. Oh, yes, we are. Awesome, you can hear me loud and clear. Beautiful. Awesome. So, as I was saying, before I was really interrupted, Mr. Camera, um, we're in a time where our spirit, man, needs to be sensitive. Um, so much more louder than our carnal state of, of living and so much more louder than the woes that we're hearing in the world today. So I just want to really encourage you, beloved, today, open your hearts wide. Paul said, open your hearts wide to me. Let these words be of comfort and be of assurance that indeed, a and you were born for a time as this. All this year, I felt a staring in my spirit, man. I feel like I'm a pregnant woman, even though I don't know what I really will feel. But I feel pregnant in the spirit. I feel like in the midst of all that's happening, something in me bears witness to it. That this was the time that I was born for. And I know that I'm not alone in this thing. You were born in this time on purpose. Whatever day you was born, whatever year you was born, God ordained that time, that moment where your mother and father conceived you. He ordained it. He sent you. He told you, Mariah, before you, um, um, I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I need you to understand that if God knew you before you came to being, there is a knowing he has over your life, even in this current state of time. And as I was hearing what was happening on, when was it? It was yesterday actually, wasn't it? But the rumours came out on Friday. I felt like the this second lockdown is a time, like I mentioned before, for us, as Susan echoed, to draw near. It's always as if like it's another opportunity for us to really face ourselves, as Emmanuel said in the comments. Another opportunity for us to revisit and readdress some things. And I really want to caution you, beloved, be a steward of the times. You know, the Bible says wisdom is principle. The Bible says that, that knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. I, I want to implore you people of God today. <laughs> the Bible says, get wisdom. But in all you're getting, get understanding. There was a tribe called Issachar who knew the times, who understood the times and what Israel ought to do. You cannot afford to be deaf nor blind in this hour. I want to pressure you into a posture in prayer where you are actually seeking to hear. Not just to hear, but to obey. Not just to understand what time it is, but you understand what you ought to do. There is an assignment in your life. And if it is ever a time where I feel the body of Christ uh, it is right now, is that it's been brought into formation. What does that mean, Ayo? So in football, we have something called formation. There's 11 players, but 11 people can't stay in the same place. It's a long pitch and there's an opposition. The formation is what is needed to position everybody in their rightful place according to their skill and ability. Mm. Not everybody's a goalkeeper. Not everyone's a striker. Not everyone's a midfielder. And I feel like we're in an hour where God is bringing formation. But you can have formation, that's great. You can have skill and ability, that's great. But remember, though it's 11 players, it's one team. Mm. Though there's many parts, there's one body. And the eye can't say to the leg, I don't need you. Foolishness. The eye will see all that he can see, but he'll never get there because the leg ain't moving. The ma Guys, I want you guys to understand something here. We are being brought into formation, but with formation, I believe there's also a word called alignment. What does that mean, alignment? Sounds like a nice, you know, pretty word. Basically, what I'm saying is that we're being brought into a time where God wants to bring a cohesiveness a unity amongst where we've been positioned that we may get the job done well. The, 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 the saying in the world, you know, if, if you want to go, if, if you want to do something, go alone. If you want to go far, go with someone else. 
The Bible talks about, you know, two is better than one. The Bible says that, that through many counsellors there is safety. Now I want to really encourage you and implore you, beloved. This is an hour to bend your air. When there is deep darkness, let me start in Daniel 2. I want you to understand something here. Yeah? God is not surprised about what's happening right now. In fact, God ordained what is happening right now. How do you know that? Let's go to the Bible right now. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 10. When I say the word ordained, it doesn't mean he created it. It means he allowed it to be. So hear me in context when I say ordained. Because in order for us to shine, there needs to be darkness, people of God. And we can quote it all day long. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, Deep darkness covers the earth and thick darkness to people. Do you know why it's time to arise and shine, people of God? Because the hour is dark. And I said earlier, I'm really seeing that there's an encumbrance amongst the people of God. Where there's an ensnarement. Where the enemy is so much speaking to our pain. That is kind of finding, we find it really hard. And I've been in myself, people of God, where we're trying to differentiate our pain from the truth. Like Jesus didn't sin. We're tr- it's kind of sometimes it's hard in these hours to, to differentiate what is happening to us and whether, we're, and whether God is, you know, happy with it happening. We, we're, we're struggling to understand what, what's going on. And I want to call you up higher a little bit. I want to call you out a bit higher than that thing. I want to call you a bit more to a bird's eye view that look, you're, you're looking too low. I want you to look a bit higher. I want you to see something from a different paradigm. That yes, this is happening right now. But there's something greater that is happening that you can't see with your naked eye. Daniel 2 says something here. Daniel is at a moment in time where the king is demanding the sorcerers and the division, the, the diviners, all these people that just do mad black magic, basically, yeah. To tell him his dream. He ain't gonna tell him the dream. You're gonna tell me what I dreamt. And if you don't, I'm gonna cut off all of your heads. So there's a man called Daniel, a man of good reputation, a man of fruit, a man that has proven himself to be a help in a present time of need. There's a word in there, people of God. When the world is in turmoil, can they turn to find a man like you who can provide an answer to their issues? And there's a man called Daniel. And they said to Daniel, he urged them to plead for mercy from God of heaven concerning this mystery, the king's dream, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Verse 19, Daniel 2, verse 19. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised God of heaven and said, Praise be look at this guys to the name of god forever and ever a new name hallelujah wisdom and power are his verse 21 this is a key part that i want you to receive in your heart today god he changes times and seasons he disposes kings and raises up others <laughs> he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning here's the key Verse 22, he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. Verse 23, I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we ask of you. And you have made known to us the dream of the king. The dream of God has revealed. God has made known. Daniel is a man who had the ability to understand the times. and the t- You know why he had that ability? He had a relationship with God. I'm not trying to, this isn't about who's prophet and who's not prophet. It's not about who's got this, who's got, none of that jazz. All of us have a direct line to the to the throne of God. Mm-hmm. All of us have a direct line 
to the throne of God. It's not an hour to ask the prophet what is God saying. No, God has caused us to be in a situation like this this year to grow you up. What do I mean? It, it, church is on your own now through the TV screen. You've got a choice. You can sit here and be doing something else and put me on mute. Or you can put me on loud and you can be actually engaging what God is saying. You, you, there, there's, there's almost an onus and a responsibility as you place on us that this walk that you're walking, man of God, woman of God, is only going to be due to the degree that you choose to engage and apply what's being said in this hour. You have been forced into a secret place. I said two weeks ago, don't tell me God's not speaking and you're not praying. Don't tell me God ain't speaking and your Bible is closed. Don't tell me God ain't speaking and you ain't asking no questions. Don't tell me that. Do that first, then come and tell me God ain't speaking and I'll tell you what God said to you. <laughs> said, as in previous tense. I'm trying to awaken you to the reality that there is a response that is on the people of God in this hour. We ought not to be entangled in the civilian affairs. Susan said last week, I don't think we deeped it. What was she actually saying? This may sound a bit whatever, but it's reality. We cannot be entangled. We cannot just be, we cannot be in the midst of the, of the chit chatter of what's happening. We must be light. And Paul says, your light ought to shine so much that you, you expose the deeds of darkness. I live and talk in the way that you expose the motives of what's happening around you. Live and talk in the way that you speak life to the hopeless. I speak, be like me. When Jesus was around, things weren't the same. People came with their issues and they got answers. People came hungry and he took five loaves and two fishes and fed 3,000, not counting men and women and children. I need you to understand, people of God. According to Romans chapter 8, his, it says this, and this, is, this, this hasn't come to me this morning. It says, I, uh, I do not consider the, the sufferings, because we're in a time of suffering, many people are suffering this hour, of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. A more truer translation unveiled within us. The outer man is decaying. I of the world is in disarray. But Paul said, but the inward man is being renewed day after day. Paul went on to tell us something. Christ in you, Emmanuel, is the hope that the glory that this world needs to see. There is a prayer in Habakkuk, I think, or Haggai, that the glory of the Lord, of the, of, of the, of the God, shall cover the earth as waters cover the sea. I believe that glory ain't God that's coming down. That glory is sons and daughters being awakened to who they are. The maturing, the maturing of, 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 of Christians coming into a state of sonship where they now manifest themselves to be like God. What's glory? God being seen on the earth. And we are his sons. And if you follow the principle of Jesus, if you see me, you see the Father. There's a reflection, there's a radiance, there's an oozing, there's something about you in this hour that ought to be bringing solutions and answers to the things around you. God is calling on the body of Christ. What is your response? What is your response? You need to respond to this time. I'm going to read it again in, in the Passion Foundation, Romans chapter 8, verse 19. The entire earth, in universe even, sorry, is standing on tiptoe, is yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. Did you hear that, people of God? Creation. Everything that's been created, all things that's been created by God, is in eager longing for the revealing or the manifestation or the unveiling of the sons of God. There's a glory you possess that ought to restore the times you're living in. The Bible says that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. 
I'm going to send former and latter rain in your days, Ayo. In these last days, there ought to be an increasing measure of God's glory, of God's extended rule in his kingdom on the earth. But the kingdom is neither here nor there. The kingdom is within you. And I'm not even here to prophesy times are going to get better. I'm here to prophesy the times need you. I'm here to prophesy that in you holds the answer. I'm here to prophesy that we're in a decade, we're in a time, we're in a new normal where we have a divine opportunity to pioneer, to create, to innovate, to translate, to transcend what is being deemed as normal and bring people into a God expectation of reality. This is an hour where God said to the man, not if you can, no, all things are possible to him who believes. Faith is the currency of the hour and it's time for us to confess, I still believe. It's time for us to confess, uh, though darkness is around me, I, I still believe. It's time for us to know that God is for us, who and what can be against us. A new name is a reminder that you carry me, Ayo. Wherever I be, I can bring glory. What is glory is not clouds and, and glitter. And glo it's doxa, it's weight. It, the Bible even says that I will give, provide for all, all things you need according to my riches in glory. We can even say that glory has a location where there's, there's, there's riches, there's things there. There's, there's, there's solutions, there's ideas, there's, there's things unseen and unheard of in glory that can be unveiled in you. Don't reduce glory to a wave and, and a wind and a wave. No, 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 no. It's glorious when you go into your office and you show, and you provide solutions that will translate your business to a whole pattern. It's glory when you feed your neighbours. It's glory when you do all the things that you think are minuscule but are changing lives around us. I need you to wake up. You're in the right opportunity not to be served, but to serve. The Son of Man came <laughs> to be served, to lay his life down. I'm telling you, there is a joy in blessing somebody beyond being blessed. The Bible says it's more blessed are you to give than to receive. We don't hear that anymore these times. Our prayer post is give, 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 give. No, no, no. God said, I have given you, Ayo. You're a gift for this time. Can you unveil yourself, please? Can you unwrap the gift, please, Ayo? Could you just take off the bowl? I know it looks nice. Take off the box and wrap it. And could you unbox what I have inside of you? Could you just be what you're supposed to be and let the people use the gift? Some of us are too enamored by, the, by how we look that we haven't done anything with who we are. This is an hour to be you. This is an, so when we, when we say lockdown now, you've got to be okay with who you are. Ayo, you've got to be okay with your difference, your uniqueness. You've got to be so desensitized to the opinions and, and the thoughts of men that you do not allow yourself to be ensnared by it. That you carry a greater fear that what God has said about you, what God has ordained and commanded about you, that takes first place in your life. This hour will expose who your God really is. Is he seek ye first the kingdom? For real, guys. I want to implore you people. What is your response to the times? Do you understand what's happening? Do you know what you ought to be doing? Guess what? If your answer is no, 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 it's time to pray. It's time to seek. It's time to pray. It's time to seek. It's time to ask. It's time to seek. It's time to go back to the first works of love in the beginning. It's time to look within yourself and, and get real. It's time. It's time. It's time. And the time is now. There's another key word that I really believe is happening in this hour as well. If you choose to respond. Your response is going to cause you to emerge. 
emergence is on the agenda of God. And I believe all of you listening to me right now are marked men and marked women who have been called for such a time as this and are now being formed to be sent. Are now being formed to be sent. Healing is on the mind of God. He is reshaping and remolding broken souls in this hour. It's time to be made whole. Susan said last week, you know, she was healed when she touched the garment. But she was made whole when her faith came into alignment with who he was. God wants to bring you to a place of healing and translate you to wholeness. It's more than touching God. God wants to touch you. Come to the potter's wall. Let me mold you. And guess what? God is tender. God is gracious. God is not like man. And for many of us, we have, we have misjudged our maker. We have misconstrued his motives. I need you to remind you today, he is a faithful redeemer. He redeems your thoughts. He redeems your sins. He redeems, your, he redeems it and he makes something new. He can take all your marring and put you under will. Get some more clay and form you and shape you. But what does Susan say? Yield your weaknesses. Stop hiding what's wrong with you. There is an exchange that can take place right now. Ah, stop hiding what you don't like about you. I really feel this strong that there is a, an element of our souls that is broken where we don't even like what is wrong with us. We, or we, even an element of self-hate. God wants to renew. God wants to reshape. God wants to heal the deep and hidden things. That's what's choking what's inside of you to be revealed in this hour. So people of God, what is your response? A new name is reminding you who you are. Therefore, if you know who you are, what are you going to do about it? Can I tell you that you are a giant slayer? Can I tell you that David was two feet and, 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 and Goliath was 12 feet? Can I tell you that David said, who do you think you are? You uncircumcised Philistine, that you could come against the army of the Lord. David said, I come in the name of our Lord and I will, he took five stones and I will <laughs> lash you in your head and cut it off. A man who was not able to stand toe to toe with him in the natural <laughs> was indeed the real giant in the spirit. He was able to take what little he had in his hand, which was five stones, and he was able to kill the Goliath that was tormenting Israel for so many days. Can I remind you, forget the size, forget what it looks like, forget the metrics, forget the, all that just does, just do, forget all of that. God lives in you. And greater is, is he as in you than him in the world. You have an answer. And by faith today, we're declaring over a &T family, that you will be a people who will not allow this time to pass you by. You will not allow this to be a time that will pass you by. You will not allow this to be a time that will pass you by. For this is an hour where God is demarking his people in this hour. There is a time where God visits his people. It says that in the word that he comes to steep low. To see whose hearts are pure towards him. And I believe we're in an hour where if we can set our gaze upon him. If we can just come from behind and seek to touch him. If we can just remember that he is for us. There is a marking on our hearts, on our lives right now. Where God's going to awaken. Where God's going to reignite. Where God's going to bestow. Where God's going to bring out the new that he's doing in the earth. That's going to come in and through you. So may you become that river in the desert. May you become that path in the wilderness. May you become that voice that prepares the way of the Lord. So a &T, respond to the time. Be a good steward of your time. Respond, respond, respond. In Jesus' name, respond. Respond, respond, respond. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, respond. Respond, respond, respond. I want that word to ring in your heart every day. Respond. And your response is what you say back to God. God is asking you. God is calling you. God is calling us. 
we're being brought into formation, it's time to align, it's time to focus, it's time to strategize, it's time to dream. And I pray the month of November will be a time of dreams and visions. The month of November will be a time of, being a, of encounter. The month of November will be a time of refreshing and renewal. A month of healing and wholeness. I pray that the month of November will be like it was for Jacob. Who wrestled with God in the night. Until the day of break. And God gave Jacob a new name. He said you have wrestled with God and had to rod. What is your name? Today your name shall be called Israel. And Israel means he who wrestled with God and prevailed. May you prevail in this hour of darkness. May you come out in this moment as a great light and a source of inspiration and hope. May you fulfill the assignment. May you get into position. May you be truly pursuing that which the Lord has set in this hour. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, be ye encouraged. We don't live by sight what we see. We live by faith. Respond to this word today in Jesus' name. So as you guys know, we have our catch-up today. I want to see all of you there.